Welcome to our fast today. I am so excited and elated to be here with you to share in this moment. You know, it's these moments that God blesses us with to help us with our spiritual development. And so today, as you're fasting, I just believe that God has something so powerful for you that is gonna change your life forever. Well, I have a quick story that I wanna share with you today. Um, back when I was 12 years old, 12 years old, living in Honolulu, Hawaii, with my parents, my mother and father started a church out there. Um, people would come from all over the world, from Japan, from uh, South Korea. They would come from all over the world just to come and experience the presence of God. And so while I was there at 12 years old, I would play music in the church and I was helping out and doing so many different things there. And we were going through a massive revival. And I was feeling good, but I wasn't feeling as if God had done everything he wanted to do with me. So there was something missing. And so I, I looked at my dad, I said, Dad, you know, I, I want what my friends have. My friends were getting filled with the Holy Spirit. They were speaking in other tongues. And I said, Dad, I want that. And you know what my dad told me? He said, pray, son. So I prayed. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And you know what happened? Nothing. And he said, son, you know what? These types of things don't come out unless prayer and fasting is done. He says, we're gonna go on a three-day fast. So I went on a three-day fast. Now this fast is different. No food, no water. And so for those three days, I was just in the presence of God. But I remember coming back on a Sunday night and I told God, I said, God, tonight's my night. I want your spirit. I want your power. I want your anointing. I know I'm 12 years old, but you have something for me. And so I came to the altar when the altar call was called and I cried out physical tears coming out of my eyes. And I was there just in the presence of God. And we had what was called a prayer tower. So they walked me up to the prayer tower. And as I was in the prayer tower, I felt an overwhelming presence of God that was in there with me. It felt like there was a thousand angels. And as I was there, 30 minutes in, I started to hear my voice change, speaking in an unknown tongue. Two to three hours later, the church had shut down. My mom and dad were waiting for me. This would not have happened unless fasting took place. Listen, prayer is important because prayer is your legal right as a citizen of heaven. You literally have the ability to petition the King of Kings for whatever it is that you're requesting from him. So you are legally entitled to communicate with God. It helps to, to get your heart right. It brings you to a place of humility and it helps you to deal with your mind, your will, your emotions, and also your physical appetite. Matthew chapter three, verse one through six says this. In those days, John the Baptist came to the Jordan wilderness and began preaching his message. And his message was, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, he is a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. John's clothes were woven from coarse camel hair and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, get this guys, he ate locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and from all of Judea and all over the Jordan Valley went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. Listen, there are three things I want you to understand about fasting, understand about the scripture, is that John prioritized preparation. He prioritized preparation. He wasn't concerned about his clothes. He wasn't concerned about what people were thinking about him. He cried out in the wilderness and prioritized his assignment. Second thing that he does, he looks and he prioritizes promotion. Everybody from around the town had John's voice in their ear. People came from all over the town and he was promoted as the number one baptizer around the area. 
Once you are at a place now where you are promoted, this is a beautiful thing. You are now in a place and you are positioned for privilege. He was privileged to be able to baptize Jesus Christ, the one he was preparing for and was privileged to be the one written and etched in history to be the only man to baptize Jesus. My question to you today is, what is it that history will record for you after you have fasted and you have prayed? God is gonna promote you to a level that you've never seen before in your life. God bless you.